Yo, what's going on you guys? Drum Machine Addicts is back again with another highly requested tutorial and today we are in Machine 2.0 showing you how to use the multi-sampling features in the software. Now, I have a couple drums loaded up and I have some pads already pre-selected just to make things go smoother. Now, as a preliminary thing you should know, anytime you drop a sample onto a pad and machine, Machine gives it its own sampling engine. Hence why you have all those different tabs that let you play with the filters, do modulations, all that kind of stuff. So it would only stand to reason that it's so powerful that you can add more drum sounds to one pad. In fact, you can add up to 128. So let me kind of show you what that looks like. If you look at the first pad, I only have one sound on there. Normally that one sound is mapped across the whole keyboard, like so. All right, I just took that sound that was mapped to one key and mapped it across the whole keyboard. That's usually the default when you go to this tab in Machine, the Zone tab, when you're sampling. So basically, the way that thing is zoned, anytime I click a key, whether in Machine or my MIDI device, my keyboard, whatever, it's gonna trigger that drum at different octaves on the scale. But if I only have it occupying that one key, it'll no longer play if I click anywhere else on the keyboard. So I'm gonna revert it back to the original so you can see the difference. All right, and if you hear that weird sound in the background, that's because the drum is so low on the keyboard, that's what the bass sound sounds like that low. So notice when I click on the keyboard, or excuse me, I'm clicking on keys, you don't hear any sound. That's because it's not zoned for those other keys. You're not going to hear anything. But if I bring it right back, everything will be just normal again. Now, seeing that with just one sound, imagine if you had 128 sounds on just one drum pad. Gets really crazy, right? Let's take a look. All right, as you can see here, I have 128 sounds on this one drum pad. So then if I go on machine and I activate the keyboard feature from my drum controller, I can play these on the octaves. So if I'm going from C0 to C1 to C2 to C3, it's gonna change the drums each time. So now I don't have to go back to the browser and search for more drums when I don't like the ones I have, so on and so forth. So I can continue creating my masterpiece. To kind of show you how it works, I'm just gonna trigger random drums just so you can see the effect of it. All right. Clicked around the keyboard, every sound has its own key, whether it's a black key or a white key, doesn't even matter if it's C, D, F, G, or A. Every key has a sound assigned to it, uh, ha, a sound assigned to it, and because of that, I have some really cool capabilities from there. But it doesn't stop there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some other things that contribute to this. All right, if you see right here, I have three sounds loaded up into the zone on machine. Mind you, they're still all on one single pad. So if you're triggering this from your machine controller, everything is still gonna be on one pad. It's not gonna be in multiple groups. Notice I only have one group loaded up in this project at a time. Really cool. All right, notice I have three sounds loaded. One sound takes up almost the whole keyboard while the other two only occupy two keys by themselves. Let's hear that. Again, that bass drum is so low that the, out, the 808 is out of tune. You can't even understand. And that kick is so low that it just sounds like a muddled sound. The snare is so low on the keyboard, it doesn't even sound like itself either but it's mapped across the rest of the keyboard, so if I go up an octave, it'll still sound good. All right, didn't find the root key, but it basically sounds like itself because it's zoned across the rest of the keyboard and I can just go up an octave or two until I found what sounds good for my ear. 
let's go ahead to this last drum pad we have loaded up. Now here, we have that same 808 from the first drum pad, and we have a kick layered under it. So the 808 by itself is going to sound like this. But if we take a look at our zone, we notice something. The 808 is mapped across the entire keyboard. But also, so is the kick drum. So now they're layered together, which means this 808 is going to be merged with this kick. So now, if I go to the root note, it's going to add some thump to that 808, like so. So notice you can still hear the 808, but now it's got a little more thump behind it because it has kick drums with it too. These are just some tips and tricks that you can use when you're in your machine project to make your drums knock harder or to add multiple samples to one pad so you don't have to keep going to the browser or importing when you don't want to. And that, my friends, is a quick multi-sampling tutorial. We've definitely got more multi-sampling tutorials to come to show you even more capabilities in machine. If you have any questions, don't forget to hit us up at drummachineaddicts at gmail.com. Also, tell a friend to tell a friend. We'll see you next week. Subscribe to the newsletter. Peace.